This year, I had to renew my passport. In 2019, it was expired. And when you renew your passport, they actually send you back your old passport. And this thing has some nostalgia. This thing, you know, if I had a sentimental possession, this would be it. I mean, I've been, I've been all over with this. There's Bolivia, uh, Belize, that was a great trip. There's, where is this? Peru, Mexico, Guatemala, seeing lots of, oh, Cambodia. So this thing, you can see it's pretty large, a lot of amazing memories in here. And when I got this back, I thought, okay, now this is something that I wanna keep. And many of you know that for a while I had literally just 111 possessions, all of which fit in my backpack. And then after that, I've lived in a tiny house in, in Orlando with almost no real material possessions there as well. So you know I don't really hold on to material possessions or sentimental things, but this actually gave me that feeling of something that I wanted to hold on to. But I really practice non-materialism and non-ownership and living in the present. So I decided I was gonna do something. And that is that I wasn't gonna keep this. Just as continuing that practice of, of not holding on to the past and living in the present. So I decided the you know, thing that would make sense to do is just cut it up. But then, just last night, as I was planning this video, what I was going to say, I thought about it and I thought, this actually doesn't make sense to cut up. Not because I'm going to keep it though, because I don't want it. But I thought about my mom. And I thought about all the postcards that I sent her from these many countries and how much joy that brought her. And I thought of 10 years of those postcards and those conversations wrapped up in this passport. And I thought this would bring my mom a lot of joy. She would absolutely love to have this. So rather than cut it up, I'm gonna send it to my mom. And you know, honestly, for me, I'd, it's a, it's, the selfish thing to do would be to cut it up because I'd rather just have it not exist. And I know that years down the road, I'm going to see this again at my, at my mom's house. So it won't be completely removed, but it will be no longer a possession of mine. And it's a possession that will bring value and happiness to my mom. So love you, mom. And this is going to be in the mail coming your way. Basically, the meaning for my mom is much more meaningful to me. So that's where it's going. Now, the reason I'm making this video though is that I see this as a great opportunity to share something with you, to talk about simplifying your life, to talk about downsizing. I get, you know, so many people that look at my life and they, they ask, how they can start to simplify, how they can start to free themselves from their huge amount of possessions that are tying them down. And I see it, you know, I see that it's something that millions of people want right now, but they're stuck and they, they don't know how to start and they don't know how to get to where they're trying to go. So I wanted to share my story a little bit and at the same time, give tips on what you can do to get started. So I grew up very low income in a house with, you know, a very small house with my mom and four siblings. And because of that, I believe that I sort of had this thirst for material possessions. I wanted to fill the holes inside of me that, were, that existed because I thought of myself as poor and different from other people. I looked at my friends that were wealthier and I saw myself as lacking. So material possessions were my way to fill that. So I was a collector. I, collect, I collected everything that you could collect. Cards, coins, uh, pogs, action figures, rocks, stamps. And my biggest addiction really was Beanie Babies. I actually had over 700 
beanie babies. And my mom had, I think, over 500. We were beanie baby addicts, uh, major beanie baby collectors. And for a, you know, a large portion of my life, I was very focused on material possessions because I saw them as a way to build myself up, to, to create a, a vision of who I was that might have been through having a huge closet of clothes, was you know, through my car, and was through my material possessions, through financial wealth. But then something happened and I realized that that's not the life that I wanted to live anymore. I realized that those material possessions were not bringing me the health and the happiness and the purpose and the passion that I wanted and that maybe my life could be better with less. And so one of the early things that I watched was actually the story of stuff. And I learned about the destruction that our stuff causes from you know, the extraction of the materials to make it, to the production of it, to the shipping of it, to the usage of it, to the trashing of it. And that was a big wake up call to me, just realizing that my stuff was destroying the world and that it wasn't bringing me health and happiness and that I was just buying into this corporate idea that I needed their things to be happy and healthy. So it was a wake up in, in many ways, personal, environmental, truth, justice, equality. And that's when I decided I was going to start getting rid of stuff. Now, at the time though, I had a lot of possessions. I was living in a three bedroom apartment in San Diego and I actually had the biggest room in the apartment because of my stuff. And there was the living room and the closet and the kitchen and it was all stuff. So I had to figure out how to get rid of that and that was a big task. And I really want to make it clear that where I am today and where I was in the past was not overnight. It was because of a lot of work. It was because I made it my full-time job to simplify my life and unravel the mess that I had gotten myself into over the last few decades, the last couple decades. So I started with an activity and that was that I would, the goal was to get rid of stuff that I didn't want, that added clutter to my life, that didn't add value. So what I did is I would, I would go through my house and I would look at each item and I would say, does this bring value to my life? Is this making my life better? Or is this actually taking away time? Is it adding clutter which makes the house harder to clean so it takes more time to clean? Is it possibly costing me money through insurance or you know constant updating? And if the answer was no, it doesn't bring me much value and it actually takes away from my life, then the answer was to get rid of it. So that was the big, big, that was a, a big starting point. And the other question that I would ask is, have I used this in the last, say, six to 12 months? If it's not something I was getting use out of, then I could remove it from my life to make space for doing what I really wanted to do. So those are two really helpful questions to me that I would recommend to you. Now, what I did is that I would basically go through my house, say every six or 12 months, and I would do that exercise over and over and over, over a period of years. And so I would half my stuff and then half my stuff again. And a lot of the things that the last time around, I wasn't able to get rid of the next time that I was. So it was a transition. And slowly but surely I shrunk my possessions. I actually went from the biggest room to the smallest room. Then I moved into a six by six closet in my house and still had the living room and the kitchen. But as far as my possessions, I had the six by six closet as my room. Then I lived in a, the 50 square foot tiny house in San Diego. And then I got my life down to just 111 possessions that I traveled for two years with all on my back or on my bicycle. So the point is though, it took time, it was a transition. It's not something that I could do overnight. It's not something that you'll be over, able to do overnight. You have to start somewhere. And that could be with one item and, and, and it's gonna take time. For some people it's gonna take, it could take five or 10 years. For me, I was deep, but I wasn't as deep as many people with storage lockers and large houses. I had a three bedroom apartment, but no storage lockers and no garage, so it was easier for me but still took years of detachment and getting rid of things. So all of these questions were basically like Marie Kondo's question. Does this spark joy? 
but basically a little bit more practical, but going for the exact same essence, really, I think. Now I want to share some other things that I did to help get rid of stuff and questions that I asked and tips that you can that you can use as well. So another thing when I was trying to get rid of things, I would ask myself is, can I rent this instead? If I'm not using it very often, can I rent it? For example, a surfboard. If I was only using a surfboard every couple months, could I just rent it instead so I didn't have to store it and have all that space? Or a car. Ultimately in 2012, I decided to get rid of my car and that was a big step for me. But I did all the math and I was spending $7,000 a year on my car and I realized if I just wanted to rent a car once a month, I could do that. So I could still use a car when needed by renting it. Even better than renting is sharing. Talking to your neighbors, getting connected to your neighbors, talking to your friends. Maybe your friends, my friends at the time had a whole bunch of surfboards, so I didn't really need one since I wasn't going often. So it's about, you can rent the items and then sharing. And sharing can be with friends and family, but it can also be the bigger picture, the sharing economy. There's all sorts of websites. There's, there's all sorts of ways to share resources with others. The library is a perfect example. Uh, you can rent tools. There's so many ways to rent or to share. And that's something that I would really recommend. Another way that I dealt with possessions and that you can as well, is if there's something that, that you really like and you would like to continue using but rarely, is you can give it to a friend who would use it way more than you and who would get you know a far better use out of it and just ask them, hey, if I give you this, Maybe it's the maybe it's a guitar or maybe it's um you know a high power kitchen you know a blender for the kitchen. If they would use it all the time and you would use it sometimes, you could say, hey, can I give you this? And could I borrow it from you once once in a while? That's a great way to pass something on, but still have access to something that you would need. Now, what about things that are extremely meaningful to you? I've had a lot of people ask me questions about sentimental items, how to get rid of those. And one guy asked me, he had a guitar for decades and he loved that guitar and just could not see getting rid of it. So what I suggested to him is to find somebody with no guitar who couldn't otherwise afford or access one, maybe a, a young developing youth, and give them that guitar so that they can love it and they can appreciate it and they can get value out of it then much more value than it's sitting in his uh, in his living room or in his closet and in that way this possession can bring you more joy by not having it by knowing that somebody else has it and even better you can follow up with that person I told him follow up with that person and 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 see the joy that it brings them and if you want to go even further go ahead and be selfless and purchase lessons for that person and actually help them develop with that guitar so that's another way to deal with sentimental items to give it to somebody where it brings more value and more sentiment to them and that can bring you joy and that possession can live on in your mind and in your legacy and not be clutter and not be something that you have to feel guilty about that's sitting around and not getting used. So a few other things that you can do, there's thrift stores, but I do wanna have you keep in mind that with thrift stores, a lot of that stuff does get thrown away. The thrift store dumpsters are, are full of stuff. So, you know, thrift stores are great, but just keep that in mind that it doesn't necessarily mean it's not ending up in the garbage. And also that it's not creating problems. A lot of stuff that we donate, like our clothes, is shipped to other countries where there it actually can cause problems. It can destroy local business opportunities and local businesses. So donating it is definitely a great option, but just keep that in mind that that it, it doesn't that there's there's some realities behind it. Another thing that you can do is you can have a giveaway party. So it takes a lot of work to get rid of things. What you can do is you can have a party for your friends and anyone in the community if you want, and you can have them over and everything that you want to give away can be obvious, whether it's in one room of your house or labeled within the house, and have people come and they can take those things, which saves you a lot of work, makes a great you know, experience 
and helps get those possessions to people that can use them. You can also sell possessions. You know, that's a great way to get the money back. You could sell them on Craigslist, you can do eBay, you can do yard sales. There's all sorts of websites for, for selling possessions. So that's another thing you can do. You can also donate it, uh, for example, to places like Materials for the Arts. So there's organizations that, that repurpose things to make costumes or to make art. So you can donate things to organizations like that. Get creative. There's so many ways to deal with the stuff and it can actually be fun and it can be enjoyable to let go. But I do want to say it is work. It's something you have to be intentional about and it is definitely going to take work. A couple other things to mention, recycling. There's a lot of things that you can recycle. So getting rid of things that way through recycling. Some things are probably going to have to go in the trash. I don't feel bad. I didn't feel bad about having to put some things in the trash because honestly, whether it's sitting for 80 years in your house or it's sitting in a landfill, plastic containers for example, that can't be recycled or something, it doesn't really make a difference. It's all trash. Whether it's in your cabinets or it's in the landfill, a lot of it is garbage regardless. I'm not saying go out willy-nilly and just throw everything in the landfill, but there's some things that, you know, that, that, garb, that putting things in the trash can make sense. Another little note on that side, I see people who, you know, they have all these plastic utensils or plastic cups in their, uh, in their drawers or their shelves because they got them eating out and then they want to use them over and over and over so that they get more use out of them. But they have perfectly good metal utensils and glass cups. It's delusional to think that using that plastic spoon 20 times is in any way beneficial to the environment when you have your reusable ones in the counter, in, you know, there in the kitchen. It doesn't make any difference. You're not doing anything more environmentally friendly. So you can let go of those things. You don't have to hold on to them filling your space with, with junk that really is a delusion to think that using it is making things better. All of those tips were on how to get rid of things. And the idea of getting rid of things isn't so that you have less, it's so that you have more. It's about making space to do the things that you love, to spend time with friends and family, to, to follow your passions and your purpose, to learn, to spend your time learning and immersing in the world. And for me, that's been the big thing. I've gained from having less. I haven't, I haven't taken away from my life. I've added value to my life. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. So I wanna talk a little bit about what you can do to prevent more stuff from coming into your life because getting rid of things is only one part of it. It's easy to accrue more possessions. So when you're gonna buy something, one thing you can do is you can ask, do I really need this or do I just want this? And is this just a passing feeling in the long run? You know, will I be fine without this? That's a basic question that you can ask in order to not accrue stuff. If the answer is, I don't really need it, then you can not buy it. Another thing you can do is you can be okay with saying no. Being okay with saying no to other people when they wanna give you something. And just explain that you know, you're know you trying to live a life with less possessions and more simply and that you value them and you value their desire to give you something, but it's just not something that you need right now. Be soft, be gentle, and also, Explain that you can share experiences. If people want to give gifts, you can tell them that you'd rather have the experience of a dinner together or, or going to an event together or something like that. A big one is not having a car or driving the car a lot less. Or if you're a multi-car family, having fewer cars. And one of the big things is when you don't have a car, you don't have a trunk. When you don't have a trunk, it's harder to buy things. If you ride your bike locally to the hardware store or to the grocery shop, go to the grocery store or whatever it is, you don't have a trunk to fill up with stuff. So not having a car or driving the car a lot less is a great way to end up buying a lot less, to accumulating a lot less. 
Another great thing to do is buy quality items that are gonna last, not things that are gonna break and then you have you know them sitting around. So buying quality items. And then buying items that are multi-purpose. So things that can be used for many different ways. A multi-tool knife is a perfect example. It's got many tools on it, it's a small thing. But that can go to, to many different things, whether it's in your kitchen or your living room or your bedroom. Buying multi purposed items that can be used in many ways. I mentioned earlier sharing, but I can't say that enough times, just sharing things. Not everybody needs to have one of everything. In the neighborhood, if 10 people have a blender, but most of them are not using it very often, it's just completely unnecessary. So sharing with neighbors, a lawnmower is a perfect example of that. 10 houses could definitely share one lawnmower, which saves you a ton of money, a ton of storage space. You can split the costs also of maintenance and things like that. So sharing, as well as through the sharing economy, all the websites that exist, your public library, there's libraries of things, uh, car share programs, bike share programs. Sharing is incredible. And then connecting with your community. One of the best things about all of this is that this is a way to actually get you more involved with your community, get you out of your house, get you more social, bring that value to your life through community. And again, none of this is about, it's not about suffering, it's not about living without, it's all about living in a way that we can live with our purpose, with our passion, with our actions in alignment with our beliefs. So. My hopes is that you know through this video you've gotten some tips. There's a lot here, so I'm sure you now have what you need to get started, to get going. And remember, it's gonna take work, it's gonna take time, it's gonna take effort. It's, there's gonna be times when maybe it's gonna make you cry and you're gonna feel down. It's gonna take work. But this video hopefully gives you those tools to get started, to inspire you and empower you, and now it's about starting that journey. So if you got a lot out of this video, if you got inspiration, you got some education, and you think that this is a video worth other people seeing, then I encourage you to um, share this video, share it with your friends that you wanna help downsize. Like the video or click that thumbs up, that'll help get it out there across YouTube to other people. Comment, ask questions, I'll try to answer most of the questions, and uh, that'll help spread it as well, and I can share some more information with you. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe if you want to see more of this. So it's been great sitting down with you and sharing how you can simplify your life to live with more. And I love you all very much and see you soon.